So we're continuing to monitor the situation in Lower Manhattan tonight, where an apparent terrorist attack has claimed eight lives, and a suspect is in custody. Eleven people are in the hospital. We do want to let you know about some other news that broke late this evening as we were preparing to get on the air, though. Now, somewhat unexpectedly, the federal court in Washington, D.C. tonight unsealed uh, the docket in the federal criminal case that's been launched against Trump campaign chairman Paul Manafort and Trump campaign official Rick Gates. Now, the indictment against Manafort and Gates was filed with the court on Friday last week and, and sealed on that day. It was unsealed yesterday morning, which is how we all learned about the government's 12 felony charges and the narrative of the special counsel's case against Paul Manafort and Rick Gates. Uh, but then tonight, without warning, they unsealed a whole bunch of other documents in relation to that case. In the unsealed docket, as of tonight, you can now see the arrest warrant for Paul Manafort and the arrest warrant for Rick Gates. The two of them were taken into custody yesterday morning, but then they were not put in jail. They were released, and it turns out they were released on very different terms. Uh, you can see here on this document, this is the one that relates to Gates. This is defendant, defendant Richard Gates here. He was released on his own personal recognizance. Um, Richard Gates was allowed to go home. The terms of release are that he is uh, not allowed to apply for a passport. He's required to stay at home. That's the phrase there, permanent home confinement. You see handwritten there. Uh, he is allowed to leave home if he needs to meet with counsel, meet with his lawyers, or attend religious services, or attend to any medical emergencies. He also needs to check in daily by phone with the court in the Eastern District of Virginia. So those are the terms of Rick Gates's release after he was taken into custody. He's released on his own personal recognizance. He has to stay home, has to check in by phone once a day. Those appear to not be the terms on which his co-defendant, Paul Manafort, has been released. As you can see, Paul Manafort's release form looks quite different. Paul Manafort is not described as being released on his own personal recognizance. His form says he was released into a high-intensity supervision program of the pretrial service agency at the district court in D.C. Now, the, the handwritten instructions on his release form are for Manafort. They're similar to the instructions on Gates's form. Manafort is instructed to remain on permanent home confinement. He's allowed to leave home only for visits with his attorneys or visits to court uh, or medical emergencies or religious services. Uh, he's also, like Rick Gates, he's instructed to report daily by telephone. But for Manafort, this high-intensity supervision program appears to be the kind of program that includes people wearing an electronic monitoring device, which presumably means an ankle bracelet or something. It's not explicitly clear from this form that Manafort has been assigned an ankle bracelet or some other kind of electronic monitor, but that is definitely the kind of program that he has been signed up for. Now, in addition to getting the arrest warrants for Manafort and Gates and these documents expressing the terms on which they were released, uh, the government also made public tonight a new, very substantive, 17-page document we've never seen before. And in this document, the government uh, notifies them about the terms of the speediness of their trial. It tells them that foreign bank records are going to be used in making the case against them. But then it also makes the case at length for why these release terms should be this strict, why these guys might represent a flight risk and need this kind of supervision. And the document is kind of a doozy. Um, here's, here's how the special counsel's uh, office opens up this case. Here's how, why they explain uh, why they think Manafort and Gates are flight risks. Quote, the defendants pose a risk of flight based on the serious nature of the charges, their history of deceptive and misleading conduct, the potentially significant sentences the defendants face, the strong evidence of guilt, their significant financial resources, and their foreign connections. Okay, financial resources and foreign connections. The special counsel's office then lays out a whole bunch of new information that was not in the indictment against Manafort and Gates about their foreign ties, about them having the financial means to flee the country, to evade this prosecution if they wanted to. And, you know, a lot was made in the press yesterday, and a lot was made by the White House yesterday about the fact that there was no mention of Russia in the indictment of Paul Manafort and Rick Gates. But here in this document unsealed by the court tonight, there is definitely mention of Russia. Uh, you'll recall that in the indictment yesterday, the special, counsel, uh, special counsel's office laid out a, a big long list of foreign bank accounts 
And those foreign bank accounts are a key player in all the, the criminal charges that Paul Manafort and Rick Gates are facing. Everything from not reporting their foreign bank accounts to the IRS to using those accounts to uh, shield their foreign income from taxes. Those foreign bank accounts are also key to the allegations of money laundering using expensive pieces of real estate and money moving in and out of those foreign accounts. Well, what Mueller's office has unsealed tonight with this federal court in D.C. is a new allegation that it was not just Paul Manafort and Rick Gates who controlled those foreign bank accounts. It was also, quote, a Russian national. I'll quote to you from what the court just unsealed tonight. Quote, the indictment sets forth in charges excuse me, the, def the indictment sets forth and charges the defendants with engaging in a long-running and complex scheme to funnel millions of dollars into the United States through various entities and accounts in Cyprus, the Grenadines, Seychelles, and England, owned or controlled by the defendants worldwide, and passed through a series of foreign accounts. Manafort, Gates, and a Russian national who was a long-standing employee of Davis Manafort Partners, served as the beneficial owners and signatories on these accounts. Russian national. Um, I, I think we can surmise from news reports that the Russian national in question here may be Konstantin Kalimnik, who was a Russian-born business associate of Paul Manafort and Rick Gates, who was uh, lovingly nicknamed Kostya from the GRU. Kostya meaning a shorthand name for Konstantin, um, from the GRU meaning he used to work for the Russian military intelligence service. Konstantin Kalimnik used to widely brag about his background in Russian military intelligence before he went to work for Paul Manafort. The government's unsealed documents that have just been released tonight allege that this Russian national who worked with Paul Manafort and Rick Gates was also an owner and signatory on their foreign bank accounts that are detailed in the criminal indictment against these two officials. Um, two pages later in the, in, in the section of these documents tonight, uh, the, the section that's marked ties abroad and frequent travel, special counsel's office tonight makes another brand new and sort of eye-popping allegation against Paul Manafort and Rick Gates. Quote, both defendants have substantial ties abroad, including in Ukraine, where both have spent time and have served as agents of its government. Davis Manafort International, which Manafort owned and where Gates worked, had staff in Kiev, in Ukraine, and in Moscow. And both Manafort and Gates have connections to Ukrainian and Russian oligarchs who have provided millions of dollars to Manafort and Gates. Foreign connections of this kind indicate that the defendants would have access to funds and an ability to live comfortably abroad, a consideration that strongly suggests risk of flight. So this is the special counsel going on record in court filings saying Paul Manafort and Rick Gates were paid millions of dollars by Russian oligarchs. And I may be wrong about this, but I think this is also the first official representation by the government that Manafort's business was staffed up in Moscow. Manafort himself has always described his business as operating in Ukraine. He's always described himself as having no Russian business ties, but the special counsel is now saying in this court filing that Manafort was paid millions of dollars by Russian oligarchs and that his business had staff in Moscow. Now, again, the purpose of this document is pretty specific. This is listing the special counsel's evidence that Paul Manafort and Rick Gates should be strictly supervised, that they should be on permanent home confinement, as it says in the terms of their release. Part of the way the government argues for that is by describing the financial resources that Manafort and Gates have at their disposal if either, either of them ever did decide to flee. Now, what's interesting about this declaration from the special counsel is that it sounds like they have tracked down every last iota of financial information about Manafort and Gates. And part of what they have turned up thus far is that Manafort and Gates have each made wildly different public representations as to how much they're worth, as to how much money they have. Well, let's start with Gates here, and then we'll do Manafort after. Here's, here's what this document unsealed by the court tonight says about Gates. Quote, recently, in a February 2016 application for a line of credit, Gates listed his and his wife's net worth as $30 million. He listed his own liquid net worth as $25 million. That said, other documents provide conflicting information. One month after that credit line application in March 2016, Gates made a residential loan application in which he listed his total assets and that of his wife as 
90% less than that. Listed his total assets and that of his wife as approximately 2.6 million. One tenth what he had said just the previous month. In connection with a loan in 2011, Gates estimated his total assets to be approximately $2.2 million. So quite wildly different representations by Rick Gates as to how much money he had, whatever that means. Uh, but check out what they say about Manafort. Quote, Manafort's financial holdings are substantial if difficult to quantify, precisely because of his varying representations. Manafort has represented the value of his assets on loan applications and other financial documents in divergent amounts. For example, in November 2016 and January 2017, he said his net assets were approximately $25 million. But before that, in August 2016, he listed the value of his assets as $63 million. And in a different application, also that same month in August 2016, he listed his assets as $28 million. Three months before that, he represented his assets to be $42 million. The month before that, he represented his assets to be, uh, to be, excuse me, his assets to be $48 million. The previous year, in April 2015, he said he was worth $35 million. And, and, and maybe all of this is true. Maybe between March 2016, when he joined the Trump campaign, and two months later, Paul Manafort did triple his net worth. And then somehow three months later, by the time he was getting kicked off the Trump campaign, Trump campaign he lost $100 million. Right? Maybe it's true, and it's been a mad roller coaster of Paul Manafort in terms of his net assets. But these new filings unsealed by the special counsel's office and the court tonight show you at the very least, the special counsel has got valuations of the assets and holdings of Paul Manafort and Rick Gates from multiple different sources going back years and years and years. They've got their loan applications. They've got other kinds of loan applications. They've got credit line applications. They've got it all. The government in this, this document unsealed by the court tonight, they argue that the case should be treated as a complex case. It shouldn't be rushed to a conclusion under the constitutional requirements that you get a speedy trial. It uh, doesn't seem like they had a hard fight on that. They note in one footnote that Manafort's counsel has agreed that the case should be treated as a complex case. Uh, but in making their argument to the court for why that should happen, the special counsel explains that uh, this is a criminal case in which the government will be relying on, and I quote, hundreds of thousands of documents, quote, both from the United States and abroad. And in an assertion that is probably blowing like a cold wind through the White House tonight, the special counsel's office also asserts that their case against Manafort and Gates will include not only bank records, uh, but also tax filings. So we don't know exactly if the president's campaign chairman is wearing an ankle bracelet tonight. We think he might be. Uh, we know that he has been released to home confinement under a high-intensity supervision program. The special counsel's office has now declared that, that Paul Manafort and, and another Trump campaign official have a history of receiving millions of dollars from Russian oligarchs. And they say their overseas bank accounts are shared with a Russian national who elsewhere we believe to have uh, bragged that he had a Russian military intelligence background. And the special counsel has put Gates and Manafort and by extension, anybody else involved in this case has put them all on notice now that the special counsel's efforts to, to track this stuff down includes them going through both foreign and domestic bank records and also tax filings. They've got their taxes. So these documents just unsealed by the court tonight. Uh, we'll get a little help a little later on this hour as to whether or not this is a normal looking declaration from prosecutors. Um, but just looking at this from a layman's perspective, uh, a, this is a lot of new information, and B, this seems brutal. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.